waves coming up. So we're gonna try and take one of these wreckers. The conditions are getting super bad. I mean, we gotta get off the mountain. So these are the fat trucks. We just became a dealer for these things. Um, it's a company out of Canada. These things are awesome. Little baby four cylinder uh, caterpillar in these things and literally you cannot get them stuck. So we're gonna be taking these up Farmington Canyon tonight and we're gonna be testing them out. We haven't really, you know, been anywhere in them yet other than the lot. So this should be exciting. Probably gonna get broken, probably gonna be cold and it's probably gonna be an adventure. So let's get started. Loaded up, ready to go. Now we're gonna head up to the V, or known as the Dykes, uh, but we're gonna go test these things out. How was that? It was cool, but it could be cooler. A lot cooler? It needs to be deeper. It needs to be floating. Yeah, we need to, we need to sink it. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize that I was standing in the water. How are you feeling so far, Aaron? It is uh, very hard to drive with a joystick. Um, definitely not like the old uh, flight simulator 1998 on the old PC. This is uh, strange. And it's also weird driving on huge balloon tires and sitting 10 feet in the air. That's another thing. I'm not used to sitting that's this high in a vehicle, so, so it's taking a little bit of getting used to. Um, I, it's extremely stable, but since I'm so used to being in like an off-road, vehicle low to the ground like a UTV or something like that. It's hard to fathom whenever you go over obstacles how much your body moves. That like normally tells me if I'm in a UTV that I'm about to roll and I'm at my tip over point. On this, it's just because of where you sit. You get that feeling when you're nowhere near your tip over point. All right, hold on. What do you think, Cole? Oh man, these things are awesome. Uh, really not much up here that's actually testing these. As you can see, these guys are just messing around trying to, trying to cause problems. Like they're not even, not even serious about this right now. Um, 
the puddles were no uh, no match for it. The hills are no match for it. The only thing that I can see that could go wrong is you just end up sideways and tipping over maybe. But right now, there's just nothing that's like really stopping this up on top of this hill. We're gonna need some deeper snow and some different situations to really test these out. Unless Aaron just tested it out for us right there. I can tell that he's just trying to get, you know, up and down on this uh, this hill so we can back up. But uh, he ended up in a pretty tight situation where he was on the side of the hill, kind of headed sideways, but now he's got it under control. These things are unstoppable. Yeah, strap, I might be able to flip them. On the lid. Went like this, and then I went full joystick because I felt the rear end pick up. We're gonna need like, a diesel Dave and a Yankum rope, I'd imagine. <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> what happened? I'm having a hard time still understanding what happened also. I don't know. I've driven down this. And when I drove down at this time, it felt like the back tires came up and I was like full joystick it forward. Came down this. That's this. Not my head. Yeah, you all right? Yeah, I'm good. I just whacked the windshield. Well, that's, uh, that's the uh, AC. I see the seatbelt on. Yeah, if I didn't have seatbelt on, I would have went through the windshield. I don't even know we'll what to say. So no, that's fine. Fine. Oh. <laughs> well, Diesel Dave's coming up with some shackles and some D-rings and some It'll flip over that way. It runs upside down really well. Because it took me about a <laughs> minute to get to shut it off. It didn't even start smoking, shockingly. So, I get a call. Actually, I was technically on the, on the phone with Haslam. And he goes, oh, oh, oh. And then he sends me this picture. You remember those fat trucks that were in our lot this morning? Well, that's a picture of one at the V with the rubber side up. Not exactly <laughs> the way that it's supposed to be. Honestly, the first thing I thought was, is Aaron all right? Uh, I saw the fat truck on its face and none of us really saw the accident happen. We just saw where the fat truck was sitting. And our first reaction was, you know, get down there, make sure Aaron's all right. And then assess, you know, the fat truck to see what damage was caused. The one really big thing about this fat truck is, is really big and hard to move around. So when we established that we needed more equipment to get it back onto its feet, I think that's when we realized how incapable we were at fixing this up on the hill. Dave Haslam initially sent a picture to Diesel Dave of the fat truck uh, flipped over, expressed that we might need some help. Um, Diesel Dave got into the het uh, with Alan and a few other employees and came up to help us out. So yeah, fat truck, this thing is super capable. We were able to go up around these mountains. I was able to come down this hill, come up this little hill right here and blast down this hill, no problems whatsoever. <laughs> I'm kidding, there was a problem, a big problem. For a second there, I thought I was a uh, like monster jam driver and I was just gonna throttle and catch a tire and it's gonna flip right back over. I didn't even know if I was upside down or upright or what. I did the opposite of a ejecto seat cuz and I just fell from the sky and landed on my head on the roof. The goal with all this is to uh, see if we can get one stuck. Now the challenge of this video is to be getting it unstuck. Um, we're not exactly stuck, I wouldn't call this stuck, but we're, we are on our lid and we're waiting for uh, Diesel Dave to come up with a heavy wrecker and uh, flip this bad boy back over. What's the plan, Diesel? Right now we let some air out of the tires, trying to get a little bit more traction, go up this slick hill. As you may have been able to tell from your footage. <laughs> Pretty slick out there. Hey, how concussed are you, bro? <laughs> I'm all right, I hit my head, but I'll be all right. 
They brought the, the head wrecker up to save us and they're having some troubles with some traction. Um, letting some air out of the tires to see if we can get up the top of the hill. Um, but this is their second attempt at the hill and uh, they're saying that like they don't think that they can get back out. So this is, uh, this is turning into a really sketchy situation, especially with the head being so big and uh, hopefully airing down the tires can allow us to get up to the, the fat truck, get that tip back over. And then we can deal with getting this pig off the mountain. Looks like we got ourselves into a, uh, a situation. <laughs> yeah. You guys might be doing more of the recovery than you think. We're going to be recovering, recovery, recovery. Yeah. Well, hopefully we get the first one done here. Then you guys might just have to be a buddy system on the way out of here, so this doesn't become a landmark. Um, they were unable to get the het up the hill, so we abandoned that plan. We got uh, Davis's truck and another fat truck, and we drove them up the hill. We need a. Uh, he ran down back to the head to get a longer strap. If we flipped it over right now, it's okay. Let's do fat on fat. Fatty McFatty. Fat on fat? Let's do Fatty McFatty. Fat on fat. Fat truck on fat truck. you never seen that before, have you? Fat on fatty sounds like my college years. <laughs> it's cool, you were there. <laughs> <laughs> we got the fat truck all rigged up. So uh, David's going to pull around with the uh, other fat truck. We're gonna hook to it, and then we're gonna tip it up over this way. Hopefully we don't do damage to the bed and the tailgate, but we'll find out. What do you think, David? I have no idea. I've never had a flip a flat truck, a fat truck, so. I know what it looks like to flip a fat truck from inside the cab, <laughs> and it's not that pleasant. So now I get to see it outside of the cab. Once we got the fat truck flipped over onto its wheels, uh, we established that it was more important to let it sit for a while and let the oil, you know, seep down past the rings uh, to try and start it again. It would have done more damage to try and start the fat truck where it was right when we flipped it over. So we let it sit for the night and had to come back the next day uh, with more help. Saturday morning, me, Jim, Dave, and Aaron, and TJ went back up to the fat truck to see if we could get it running. One thing that we noticed while we were up there, there was there's no getting a truck and trailer up to the spot where the fat truck was, but we did have a solution sitting back in the shop. Uh, the 6500 that we've been working on would have been the perfect truck to load this fat truck on, but we weren't exactly done with the 6500, but we didn't have any opportunity to finish it before we needed to use it. So we buttoned everything up, 
put a winch on the, the headache rack and we took the 6500 up there, half complete, to finish the job that we had started. Ten millimeters always missing, Cole. Oh yeah, this guy came up on his four-wheeler. I was like, dude, thank God you're here. You got a 10 mil? <laughs> <laughs> no, lost that years ago. We got a lot of batteries, Jim? Yeah, a few batteries. Okay. They're all cold, so they're probably gonna last like 15 seconds each. We've came to uh, retrieve the uh, fat truck here. Um, I think I'm gonna try pulling off this section of uh, the headache rack and get it out of the way of the windshield, and then we'll see if this thing fires up. Diesel Dave and uh, Dave Haslam heading up right now, and uh, yeah, we're gonna get a jump start on this, start taking some bolts out and see where we get. A lot of it. Clean as can be. We hey, we probably need a couple quarts of oil. I don't know. Okay. I'm checking it. A little oil in there? I think we're actually good on all the level. We'll see though. Need uh, what else drained out of this? Maybe a little bit of diesel, but I don't know. Out of the tank. Did you try crank? Want to try cranking it? Want me try cranking it? You could hit it. Yeah. Hit it. I mean, it's probably not the greatest thing for her, but I don't think that starter is no, that strong. Mean, yeah, there's, we got I'm gonna pull a blow plug. Injectors. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the di injectors disconnected. We're going to take off the injection lines. We're just gonna pull them back out of the way a little bit. We'll disconnect the fuel return over here, and then we'll pull each injector out. And then we'll take them, we'll set them over off the side, and then we'll turn this thing over and see if we get some oil to come up out of this thing. As you can tell, that's the uh, air filter housing. Oil was just leaking all the way on that when this thing was upside down. So here we go, bit by bit. Our objective when we got up to the fat truck was to pull the injectors, clear out the cylinders, top off the engine oil, and then replace the air filter that was soaked in oil. Yep, now we're gonna turn her over and... <laughs> Jeez! <laughs> Jeez! Oh my gosh! Where did that go? The only thing I'm... Where did that go? It went fuel, it shot fuel out of the, one of the, uh, the injector lines, and then it shot oil out of the couple cylinders. Run it around real quick, just again, just to be safe. Got oil? Yep. Yeah, that's oil. I don't have a helicopter, but I'm gonna get his ass back in the desert somehow or another. Save your truck, he just took a beating. The door was open on the pickup. <sighs> I wonder how <laughs> He's so funny. <laughs> My phone is toast. I would like to maybe ask him why. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to get everything cleaned up and start putting it back together. Yep. Unfortunately, the fat truck did not start. We established that there was probably something wrong with the starter or something electrical in the motor. So we decided to get the fat truck onto the 6500. We had a few different methods on how we were going to load the fat truck. None of them ended up really working that well. We could not disengage the belt drive, essentially getting it into neutral. So we just drug it up using the winch. Or we encountered a load of issues. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Here goes our light, the chassis light. 
Oh no. Dang it, how will we ever recover? Luckily. Luckily the winch is strong. Luckily we got a camera on that. <laughs> Luckily the winch is strong. Are you impressed by the winch at least? I'm impressed by the winch. Not impressed with the lack of pipes. We slid around the side of the hill for probably three hours that night. When we loaded the fat truck onto the 6500 and head down the hill, we immediately realized that we had a problem. One of the bolts aligning the rear axle was not installed properly, causing the truck to crab walk. We were able to, using a tie down strap, straighten the rear axle out. Once we got the axle squared away, we did not realize it, but we had just barely run into the rest of our problems for the night. This is intense. This has been great. This has been great footage this entire week. I'm never doing this again. Thank you, man. Oh. I, don't I don't think it pays off. <laughs> What's that? You don't think what pays off? No, I'm just saying no matter what, <laughs> we are. The footage? Dude. Yeah. This is good. This is Hope good. you guys are enjoying it. This is good footage, but it's miserable for all of us. No, yeah, like, like, it's, like it's expensive, it's stressful. Dude, I'm so uneasy right now. Buddy. All right, just trying to hit your forward. We need to get Jim yep. closer to yep. us right here. I don't want to go further down that hill. I feel like this is going to slide on the ice. If the thing just yeah. leaned over. I just don't like it. Yeah, with no. I'm other. having massive rollover anxiety problems. Snow Eskimo here pretty soon. <laughs> You'll love the snow. I love the snow. Okay, Got a soft strap right here. I think uh, I'll end up just breaking free here. And we'll hook up single strap. We're up in safety zone. That's what I feel good about. I don't like seeing a hundred and something odd thousand dollar fat truck hanging off the side of a mountain about to roll down. Here, Cole. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I hope your burrito is delicious. <laughs> TJ, hold the brakes. Twisting that. The axle, you see that? Yeah. This is sketchy, man. Like a shit. I don't like. It. All right, Kyle, chill, Kyle. That's good. Jim. We're good, my man. Come down, Jim. Holy sh I feel like we went too far, Jim. Oh, come on, man. I feel like we're leaning as much as we were before. Skid steer, this is completely backwards. I don't know if, if I will. pull, he's just gonna slide downhill. He's, he's gonna have to get in reverse and... Just maintain that tension, right, to keep him, yeah, actually, yeah, to keep him uphill. Right. If Kyle keeps the tension, you can keep it, you keep it from walking. Yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna pull, uh, we're gonna pull Mr. Lonesome Dovetail backwards. 
get them up here on the flat where we can work on it, get everything straight. Uh, I'm gonna pull with a fat truck in reverse, which sucks because my skid steer controls, you back up and turn side to side. This way, that way is this way, that way. Fat truck is backwards, so we're gonna have to figure that out. Um, Kyle's gonna keep winch tension on that corner to keep this dovetail from sliding back off the hill and uh, hopefully get us a little bit of room where we can work on this thing and get her dialed in. Get out of here. Keep them on the winch all the way down. Okay. I feel better about it. Scrap steers. Okay. Okay, TJ, keep going. Kyle, winch out. I'm just trying to stay out of the way. I feel good right now, where you go? Well, it's sketchy because we're crab steer, and that's what's sketchy. So the back of the thing's trying to go off the hill, and then the front of the thing, it feels odd because the rear axle isn't centered. This is ridiculous. So I learned my lesson. Anybody new I have working the shop, I have to like literally walk to them like a hawk for weeks at a time. Probably let them do the simplest of tasks, like installing lift blocks on the back of a truck. I yeah. was almost thinking we pull, just, we'll see what happens. If he starts going this way at all, we'll hook up and pull up towards up there somehow. Well, Turn her back around, yeah. That's what we might have to do. Let's see what it looks like. Right. I'm, I'm watching here. I'm gonna keep him off this ridge. Might as well hook me here. All right, we're on the fire break road. Blizzard's coming in. It's supposed to snow a foot tonight. Uh, my weather report said 12 to 18 inches. That's the most I've seen it in three years. So our problem is we're going up this hill. We've got maybe a half a mile left to go. We've been working on this for 10 hours. How long have we been here? Three days. Three days. <laughs> Actually, no, yeah, no, like, this is day three. Here three days. This is day three. Today is, right now is 10 hours from today. Problem is we've got a little underinflated in this tire right here. So we're super low on the downhill side. And uh, we got a little bit of axle tweak. And our, our pitch on the road is angling us into this hole right here. We get in that hole, so we go in that hole. I mean, you can't maybe see it, but. Oh, we can see it. It's deep. We are not coming out of there, so. We're there repositioning with the winch over here. There you go. Love it. Use that rock. You want to hook on frame or up on the bed? I was grabbing the frame right yeah. there. I don't have anywhere to hook yeah, on the maybe bed. even freaking fat truck. I don't know. I mean, Frame's good. good, yeah. Frame will keep us up more. I just worry we're freaking mean and hard. You want you want that top angle? I mean, I that downward pull would help, I think, too. I think You're so. right. Something let's let's grab the same anchor point, man. That's a good idea. Right here? Even now, hell, even if we went up fat truck, I don't care. Whatever you want to do. If we pull on the fat truck, it's just going to counter pull on the strap opposing. It'll pull us down, man. Let's try this right here. Okay. This is probably the scariest spot for me. Just with that that? that ledge right there. We're sloping away, sloping down. Take a Not looking good, Cole. Watch your blocker. Keep going. You're good. Are you? We're, it's straight now. Uh, the tires turn this way. First hill. Okay. Straight back, buddy. Um, straight back. We're past the hairpin. That's good, Kyle. Right there. Well, I guess you can go back yep. more and get your nose further that way. This way. That's good. Different comments Aaron's made over the last couple of days coming through. One more. Oh, yeah. All right, hold, hold. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How's it looking? Not good. Not good at all. I don't know. Huh? Hey, we gotta go like three feet and we're past. Back up. Turn that way hard. We are right here. Yeah, he has shift for certain angles. Look at that. We straight! Pile out! He's gotta go! He's got a good three feet on the path. Okay. Parking brake, hold it. 
Holy shit. Do you need me to pull him up that hill? It's honestly in the hardest spot right here. Yeah. Like if it falls. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's our best bet. Do we have a sling for that? Yeah, we got For my pulls. truck, yeah, we got all these slings. We have shackles and stuff too. It's coming down. That's what's going it's on. coming down. It's freezing. So TJ was able to make it out of the like I consider the most perilous spot. We got one more of those. We have one. I mean, this hill climb right here, being as icy as it is, Jim's truck's just spinning. Jim's gonna pull out of the way over here. We're gonna get TJ by in the 6500, and then we're gonna follow up the fat truck behind the 6500. And we're gonna use the fat truck to assist Jim up this hill. Hopefully, a 6500 just walks this. I don't know. Might, might, might not. We but can't. We get have it. to get the fat truck around to pull on the 6500. <laughs> I don't know if we're gonna get that though right now either, because uh, we only have one turnout right here. We were able to get the 6500 and the fat truck off the hill. Now that we've got these back in the shop, we're able to pull apart the fat truck to see what's wrong with it. Aaron's thinking that it's the starter, but honestly, it could be a long list of electrical issues or complications from it being upside down for so long. Um, not only that, this week that we need to finish the 6500. So next week, we're going to be working on the 6500, getting that ready to go and getting the fat truck ready to go. We've got to take these up to the Snowden series with Heavy D um, this weekend. So hopefully just by Thursday, we've got everything buttoned up on the 6500 and we've got this fat truck running again. But uh, fingers crossed that's the case. Stay tuned next week.